Alright, so I'm gonna start bringing everything up, all the audio and whatnot. And, uh. Now you folks are audible. And, uh, and in the, uh. In the home version, uh, people can now hear music. Go Mandarin! <laughs> and so, let's do this. Will we display capturing? That one foggy rag and rock. We turn this say. off, and we are mostly live except for the audio. Uh, logo, rather. Go hard with your teeth <clears throat> bright. Well, you join me <laughs> in this fight. All right, are you going to do the intro or just sing to uh, the people <laughs> just in there? Let's even sing. We got it. That That's true. all the dead got fought. In. Yeah, anyways. <laughs> Man, I spent all day writing carols, but let's do this. I hear I'm she. Shivam. Hmm? No, go on. Three, two, one. I'm Shivam Putt. I'm Phil DeLuca. And I'm Olivia Guest Host. And we are Commanderin. <laughs> <laughs> yep. One day you'll Thanks make for listening, without everybody. laughing. No way. <laughs> we put a spotlight on community issues, but never, ever talk about three banned topics. Politics, religion, and Hearthstone. Aha! Uh -huh. And we have yet to break at least one of those rules, so I think we're good to go. Um... But today, actually, we have a really fun and special show because um, it's Apocalypse Now, and the Gruul God has come to play. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. This card was just revealed today as of this recording. Uh, Ilharg the Razebore. And independently, all three of us were like super excited to want to run this guy. So we've all brainstormed interesting cards and a framework for a really cool deck so that you can run down your friends and turn them into sod. <laughs> so yeah like Ilharg is a great new addition to Red he does totally unique things that we haven't seen on a body before and so um, let me read the battering ham to you right now <laughs> I love this I love all the names and puns we can do this guy it's going to be do ridiculous you, do, do you want to get to this when we uh, when we actually do the deck we can reread them oh uh, yeah we'll, I guess we'll reread um, Ilharg when we get down there yeah uh, and uh, but, in the meantime, this was a uh, preview card of, uh, what is it, MMORPG.com. So make sure to go visit mm -hmm. them uh, yeah. and uh, give them the traffic because that's why uh, outlets like us and them get preview cards. And um, they have a really cool animation from Arena of Ilharg doing his cool coming into play animation. Yeah. It's really sick. Yeah, they do. It's really worth seeing. But now, if you wanted to support the show and help us continue to bring you uh, such great content. Uh, the best thing to do, first off, is to share this podcast and this stream with your friends, uh, because word of mouth is the best way to tell people to bring I mean, to bring people to us, and it works really, really well. The other way you could do that is to rate us positively wherever you guys get to see or listen to your podcasts on your iTunes, your Stitcher, Spotify, what have you, and uh, we really appreciate that too. Uh, visit us on YouTube at uh, Commander and MTG, which is our channel name, and you can see all of our VODs and old episodes there. And uh, watch them all the way to the end, because that way the YouTube algorithm knows that somebody watched our program. And <laughs> they can feed it to other people, which is actually really helpful. Yeah. Um, finally, if you want to take that extra step to help us out the way Gavin always tells you to do, you know, spend that one buck a month, just a pack a day will keep us out of poverty. Whoa. Uh, well, maybe not poverty, but keep us on the air at least. You can visit us at uh, <laughs> patreon.com forward slash commander and MTG or commander and MTG.com forward slash donations. Or you can go to our GoFundMe page and search for commander and using our show's logo. But we do have a couple of sponsors we wanted to talk about. Mm -hmm. Our sponsors, of course, are you. Um, each week we call out a couple of our patroni and thank them personally because of, we are so grateful for their continued support. And this week we're calling out Anthony Morgan and Daniel Rager. Thank you both so much for all of your support. We're deeply grateful to everything you guys do because that lets us do what we want to do, including things like, look, I've got light on my face. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and our second sponsor, which is really cool, yeah. is that we actually have a sponsor. 
a real sponsor. <laughs> it's not just a, a corporate me. sponsor, if you will. We yeah. are now corporate there you shills. Go, yeah. And I actually have mine right here. Me too. Mine's upstairs. Sorry, guys. I did. Oh, I thought you were gonna have your husband bring it down. Guest host, and I, yeah, he may be. A we sponsor. are sponsored by Quiver, the makers of uh, quivers. Quivers uh, and fine. My sleeves. headphones fell. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We are also uh, professional podcasters. Everyone. <laughs> professional podcasters uh, would have a, a sponsor as cool as Quiver like this. Woo! Yeah. So uh, these uh, we we uh, want to say thank you, of course, to the folks at Quiver. Um, they are enabling us to do giveaways of you know items like this Quiver, and you can hear some stuff rattling around inside mine. But they also do sleeves and. Uh, their new Artemis sleeves are matte black, and we haven't put them to the test yet, but we will, uh, and we'll let you know how they go. And, um, yeah, so we're doing a quiver contest, and at the end of the month, really the beginning of May, uh, anybody who is a patron of ours in May is uh, eligible to win one of these quivers. And yeah. uh, they have gracefully given us a, uh, a full quiver of the uh, color of the winner's choice, as long as that color's in stock. And... Um, and uh, some uh, uh, packs of Artemis sleeves as well. So I don't know if you can see the color on mine. It's hard to tell. Uh, it's uh, purple. Uh, yes, for, teal. for the audio listeners at home, mine is uh, shark's teal because I also love hockey. And this color is bright and vibrant and hard to lose. Yeah. I mean, they have like colors like black and white and whatever. But I'm uh, hoping that whatever? at some point... Huh? And whatever, uh, those are the best colors. Well, they don't have white. I'm hoping that they put out an orange one because that's that would be my jam. Yeah. But I love this thing. It's so much fun and like it holds everything and it's great and it's very eye catching. Yes. You can't see my quiver, but imagine that it's a quiver but black. But black. Black yes. surprise. She uh like the, my heart. the 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 uh, fourth color is not actually white, it's pink. Um and uh, I know, uh, I know that's which was actually my second choice. <laughs> it, 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 it's my second choice too. Like I, I want a nice pink quiver. And uh, yeah, family so friendly shows. <laughs> hey, you're the one who brought that up. So, um, thank you again, Quiver Time, and uh, to all of our listeners who aren't yet patrons, you still have time to join. Please do join. If you do a buck a month, you can even set it so that you cap it at one dollar a month enters you to win a uh what is this like a 40 dollar quiver or something and they're truly fantastic we haven't i have i have this video i haven't yet finished editing it um and i'll see if how much of a disaster this is um but you can see like inside oh it's falling apart not it but my decks and other cards let's make sure oh no that's not. not really how it's supposed to be used this is not how so it's anyway, supposed to be used so anyway quivers are actually great <laughs> <laughs> this is and uh, pay no attention to the man leading the podcast this was the uh, a magic quick reference guide because i was teaching magic this weekend um cool. and and i put it in my quiver so i made sure i had it but uh yeah these are great products and they store cards and they store dice and all sorts of things so go take yeah. a look at them for reference, I can put five double sleeved decks in there, yeah. and two playmats, and a bunch of dice. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a pretty good uh, pretty good. It's like way bigger than it looks. It's like I was actually very surprised at how much I could how much I could get to uh, fit in there. It's bigger um, on the inside. It's been fun, guys. I'm gonna take <laughs> off. So. See yeah, sorry. This is uh, this is the segment of the show where we show off our quivers and. And uh, sorry about that, Olivia. Thank so, you, Quiver, for sponsoring yes. Commander and Thanks. MTG. We'll Thank do better you. next please, time, Quiver. Please we don't promise. regret your decision. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but before we get to our main topic, uh, let's talk about some news. More Obviously, teasing. Obviously, we're knee deep in the War of the Spark spoiler season. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of people have been wondering if uh, Planeswalkers can be commanders. The rules committee has said, no, we're going to keep with the status quo. And that's really all we have to say about that right now. So if that ever changes, I will let you know. But except for the ones that already say you can play them as your yes, commander, Legal except for the commander. ones that specifically say, like you know, Rowan and Kenrith, uh, or the ones from the commander precons, sure. good enough. Yeah. And of course, your flipwalkers, which uh, I heartily recommend yep. using because they're awesome. Yes. But do you smell something cooking? 
Is that the battering ham that you put in your deep fryer? <laughs> <laughs> it is the pork up. A pork up lips. Uh, the a pork up lips now. <laughs> Yes. Well, Olivia you know I can regretting life right now. Just now? Just now. <laughs> so, Ilharg the Razor. This guy Actually, oh, is yeah. absurd and amazing. But let me read him to you. Oh. Uh, or do you want to do it, Olivia? Yeah. I'm yeah. Okay, you do it. Okay. And Ilharg so is Ilharg... up on screen right now. Yes, he should be. Uh, Ilharg the Razor, also known as Nago the Demon God is a legendary <laughs> creature, a boar god. He's mythic. He is five, a three red red, and a six six. He has trample. Whenever Ilharg, the raised boar, attacks, you may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield, tapped and attacking. Return that creature to your hand at the beginning of the next end step. When Ilharg, the raised boar, dies or is put into exile from the battlefield, you may put it into its owner's library, third from the top. So good. It's so good. You want to exile? Just kidding. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's good <laughs> stuff. So right around it. It's funny because uh, I was looking at the Reddit comment from our um, our spoiler to Healy, and somebody was like, without even listening, I know that Shivam is going to say, this is the dumbest thing. And they were right. Because <laughs> that's literally what I was about to say about our, our, our Borpocalypse over here. Mm -hmm. That this is so silly. It really six, is. 6 Trample for 5 is great. 6 6 Trample for 5 that has a lot of words on it is just insane. He's the whole, Leah's whole sentences. Two complete sentences. And both of them <laughs> are so. Do stuff. So much. <laughs> they use complete sentences, everyone. Yeah, well, I mean, look, dude, the gruel, <laughs> that, that, that's a high bar for them. It now, is. First off, just. Oh, crap. This guy, mono red, mono red big creatures. That's like not a format that you see a lot of, but there's so much potential for like just absurd things you can put into your hand, put into your deck, and bring out into play for free. I don't know. Ulamog? Yep. Uh, any amount of dragons? Obviously, the strategy here is to put out as many cool cards you can, put out as many cool creatures you can, and keep them in play. But even if you don't, just reuse those ETB triggers because that's really just insane chaining. Mm -hmm. Well, this so, this uh, hard, the the pork oh, okay. god. Everything okay over there? I just thought of a card that we needed to talk about, and it's uh, it's accounted for, so we're good. Great. All right. Um. So we. Uh, <laughs> thank goodness. It's really important. Yes, it, it is. I might have like popped a seam or something. <laughs> so the uh, Ilharg's uh, primary ability, of course, is that ability to just like literally sneak attack something in. Um, and so we wouldn't, we would be remiss if we did not talk about sneak attack, right? The enchantment that you pay red and you can put a creature from your hand onto the battlefield. But the difference, the primary difference is um, you sacrifice the creature at the beginning of the next end step instead of returning it to your hand for fun and profit the next time. It's, mm -hmm. it's, uh, this Ilharg is amazing. I kind of just want to stare at Ilharg all night long. Now, one thing that made me laugh a lot was that uh, one of my Twitter followers called him uh, Sow and Tell instead of <laughs> Show and Tell. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yes. That's, that's great. That's so good. That is really good. <laughs> it is so good. Congratulations, Shivam's Twitter follower, for you have won the internet tonight. <laughs> Oh I, God, what was his name? Barbarian? <laughs> that gentleman. Was that Barbarian's uh, Riddle? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, oh, Barbarian's Riddle. Amazing. Sow and tell. And I was like, that is, <laughs> that is it. That is it. We're done. Oh, my goodness. But, yeah. So, Sneak Attack is obviously fantastic with this card because it works with every other card that you would put in this deck, too. But sometimes, though, Sneak Attack is also good, you know, with your Leaves Play triggers. But sometimes you just want to keep the guy around instead of just bouncing it back to your hand. And one of the cool tricks you can do is Conjurer's Closet, that beloved EDH staple. Oh, that... it's awesome. Yeah, frankly, I don't see enough of on the tables. I think this card is amazing. You know, the mm -hmm. uh, five mana artifact that it says is. at the beginning of your end step, uh, exile target creature you control and then uh, return it to play under your control, which is basically like, you know, face it out immediately. So... When you do that, it resets the triggers. It's a new card. 
it's a new card so that the uh, exile or leaves play or bounce back your hand trigger doesn't take effect. And you just happen to also, I don't know, nug someone for three or whatever. You're, if you put out your flanking Kavu or what have you. <laughs> right, um, right. And, I mean, hey, in, in a pinch, you can also just blink Ilharg and have pseudo vigilance, right? Yeah. And yeah. if you're putting in extra combat steps, uh, go to town. <laughs> Finally, of course, uh, Sundial of the Infinite, that all purpose like card that when it came out, everybody was like, I don't, I don't get it. Yeah. Why do we need a card that just says end the turn? Turns this out, is the card I was ending just... the turn is broken. Yeah. <laughs> and... Super broken. Tell and... us about Olivia. <laughs> All right. Fine. I mean, yeah. Sun. Sorry, Sundial is exactly what I was. I was gonna mention when I was having my my oh, good, spasm good. there for a second. Good. It was Sundial. So, I was like, oh my god, you could just end the turn. You, we need Sundial. <laughs> so do you? Uh, do you want to? You want to talk about this one or? Like, just read it. Talk about it, or no, just, just, what do you think it would be used for here? Oh, oh, well, here's the deal. So Ilharg, super friend, whoever he pops out returns to your hand at the beginning of the next end step so if you have sundial the infinite i'll pay one and tap it there is no end step just it's tap it at the pretty... end of second main there's no end there's yep. no nothing and on you go well i'm i'm checking uh ilharg now um just for the uh the wording there because if it says at the beginning mm-hmm. of the next end step then um that means if you if you end it before let's see uh when you know, let's see Return that creature to your hand at the beginning of the next end step. Right. So it's a it's a delayed triggered ability, and you want it to go on the stack. Next end step. Yeah. And mm. um, right now I'm all confused, but uh, at I the don't beginning. I think so. When, whenever, and at. So yeah. So it goes on to uh, the stack, and that's when you want to activate the sundial, because oh, right, it, yeah. it exiles all the effects and spells that are on the stack yes, yes, when yes, you yes, activate yes. it. I so, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. a good point. And, Thanks, uh, Phil. I would have yeah. gotten that wrong literally every time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it, it's really tricky. You just wait for it yeah. to happen. You have to be really patient. Because if you yeah. go, to, if you move to your end step and somebody's like, wait a second, disenchant, and they take out your sundial. Then I know, start. right? Then you have to cry. Because somebody was really or mean. Or just, you know, yeah. return to that creature Or to just your pummel them next turn. Yeah, Pop exactly. Yeah, the, the worst thing, thing that happens is it comes back to your hand, but still. And exactly, yeah. Can we stop for a second and talk about how amazing that power is, by the way? <laughs> Being able to bring this thing back to your... Like, I was expecting it would say, like, okay, put the creature out into play, and then the creature dies at the end of turn. That makes sense. That's red. It makes it... Right. Bouncing it back to your hand mm-hmm. seems unfair. <laughs> like, like that just seems, seems unfair. So actually oh. is unfair <laughs> <laughs> not only does it seem unfair yeah so we call that cheating don't we <laughs> <laughs> kind of except it's in the rules it's just exploiting the rules is what it is it's not cheating yeah it's exploiting the rules because it is clearly yeah. said it's written on the card that's what the rule is we're just taking yeah full advantage extra advantage extra advantage even <laughs> now speaking of extra we advantage, have more cards to get through there's a lot of spice here so a lot of spice <laughs> yeah on this barbecue there's sauce for our pulled <laughs> pork i'm not pulling that pork my friend sorry um i will but um Love me. <laughs> so let's say you attack with ilharg you put out flamekin kavu or flametongue kavu or any of the kavus and hit someone for four but you know what? Hitting one thing for four is not very good when you could be hitting two things for four. And you know how you do that? With my beloved favorite card, Panharmonicon. Push. Panharmonicon <laughs> says, when a creature or an artifact enters the battlefield, causing a triggered ability to trigger, it does it again. And mm-hmm. uh, Ilharg said, when he just brings his friends into play, they trigger their abilities. And you really need to be having as many things that just have bananas enter the battlefield abilities mm-hmm. and they'll hit them twice or i don't know let's say you happen to have oh perforos <laughs> who comes in like he triggers twice with panharmonicon when a creature comes to play and then bounce it back to your hand and comes into play again it's pretty gross gimme pretty pretty disgusting and of course uh strionic resonator which also lets yeah. you kind of pseudo panharmonicon your way in which lets you pay to tap and uh, copy target artifact uh, like triggered ability. Strionic Resonator, by the way, is like one of the greatest Johnny cards ever made. 
Like, mm -hmm. being able to copy triggered abilities is such a... Like, it's a rare that when you open it for the first time and you're not, like, familiar with it, you look at this like, I don't even know what a triggered ability is or why I would want to copy it. <laughs> Turns out, you really want to copy them. Because they're really, really good. They're really yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody in Twitch chat just suggested Illusionist Bracers, but it's important to note that Illusionist Bracers don't activate. They don't work that way. Correct. Because the uh, Bracers are whenever an ability of an equip of equipped creature is activated, if it isn't a mana ability, copy that ability. But these are not activated abilities. These are triggered abilities. So mm. yeah. So don't don't uh, don't think that you're all like you know you you your Illusionist don't Bracers are going to be. Yourself awesome yeah, exactly. because they're not i mean if you have a lot of enter a lot of creatures uh, you don't want to do that <laughs> i don't know like yeah. when i was imagining building this deck i was thinking that there would be a lot of like dragons that come into play because a lot of these dragons have like when they attack do blah but then yeah. i realized because i spoke to eli schiffer the rules manager ilharg says they come into play already attacking yeah they skip the de attack declaration step and just so like that's really Alesha. important because you guys might make the mistake that i made which is that you think that your uh when you attack with a creature trigger will happen it won't like if you attack with i don't know your uh battle sphere or something that says when you attack pay x to do y you never got to the when you attack part with ilharg they just came in right. fist first so you got all the <laughs> battlefield triggers but you don't get the attack triggers. Right. So that might make that that'll probably make a difference when you're building this deck. But yeah. it does mean though that you can think about cool value creatures that you want to have. For instance, like I don't know, stuff like Eldrazi Mimic, which is such a great card that says, you know, when another colorless creature uh enters the battlefield, you can change Eldrazi Mimic's uh power and toughness to be the power and toughness of that card. So for instance, if you I don't know, zoom in and bring in Worm Coil Engine, you're uh Eldrazi Mimic is suddenly a 6-6, six, six, which is... Yeah. Like, there's a viable path here that um, that has a lot of colorless creatures because of the artifacts, uh, the artifact affinity that Red has. If you, let's say, use Felden as one of your actual creatures and uh, you have a lot of artifacts, you can... I love Felden. You're going to be bringing... Uh, you're going to be doing a lot with artifacts and have, in terms of synergy anyway. And so if you're bringing a Worm Coil in, <laughs> well, that's pretty good. That's <laughs> well, pretty good. I mean... The love story of Felden and his worm coil is exactly what Ethan Indeed. was going for when he put that in, into that deck. And uh, and that's uh, and so the the mimic only copies colorless creatures, but uh, the the key there is if you're bringing a lot of creatures in, you might as well have you know send your mimic in, bring in something that's say a six six like worm coil, and now at the very worst you have a mimic that's a six six and it's plowing into your opponent. That's pretty right. good. One of my friends who plays formats other than our beloved one was suggesting that you could bring in um, the Titan that smashes lands. Uh, Isn't that Combustible the, Gear Hulk? No, well, no. Combustible Gear Hulk. Oh, the Titan. Too, oh, but, right. uh, yeah. The gross one. Uh, Sundering Titan? It's Sundering banned. Titan. Yeah, that's the one. He was like, you can use Sundering Titan with Ilharg. And I'm like, not in Commander, right. not as long as I've got any yeah. say. Right. But yeah. <laughs> think about how gross that would be to copy those triggered a few times yeah yeah, yeah. it's no. uh it is gross that is gross um this uh this next card is one that i uh was exposed to uh years ago like I, that was shown years ago and it's really really cool it's kind of uh kind of janky and crazy at the same time it's hamlet back goliath uh, i love this guy yeah for six and a red and this is one that you want to try to keep out so after you've uh bounced it with a closet or some other way to keep it out maybe even hard cast it if we're really desperate uh well you're gonna have a lot of mana because uh ilharg is going to be doing most of the casting for you and this one says mm -hmm. whenever another creature enters the battlefield you may put x plus one plus one counters on hamlet back goliath where x is that creature's power the thing you have to remember though when using hamlet back goliath is it doesn't care who owns the creature or who controls the creature it's Just whenever another, another creature. creature yeah and since you're going to be putting a lot of creatures on the battlefield mm, you might as well take advantage of that and you know what else yeah. is in red fling <laughs> yes oh isn't thud in there too thud fling yeah. the sounds that your opponents make when ilharg runs them over <laughs> yes indeed I, I was just like thinking about that because Hamlet Back Goliath was one of those cards that was in a lot of these weird in-store promos at like Target and Walmart and things I like that. I have like 17 of those. Yeah, yeah, like I don't know why. I've got like a dozen of them sitting around and I'm like, 
this thing is actually really good and I should actually be using it in more decks. But um, yeah, it could be really fun. Yeah, you know. And, go ahead. Go, <laughs> no, I thought you were pausing, but go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say also a lot of the Devoid creatures from um, oh, Oath of the yeah. Gatewatch can be used here too because they can uh, pump up your Mimic and do all the fun things. Yeah, that's a good point. If you want to get like some of these uh, red Devoids. That's a really good point. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Phil. Um, I don't remember now. It's okay. Hamelback, <laughs> we've all got them. You yep. know you've got them yeah, somewhere. Yeah, use them. Oh, that's what I was going to say. I'm going to detune Italia at some point and maybe take out one of the mass land destruction cards. And I'll put <laughs> Hamlet, back, Hamlet back in because it's fun. Um, so that's the last of our Two extra value creatures. Hamlet back. Oh, is it the last? It is. Is right? it? Oh, is goodness it? gracious. Because you know what I was thinking? Maybe what? you were on the same page as me, Olivia. Uh, you know what goes really well with Apocalypse? Blight steel. Mm. Oh, come on. Yeah, you know, it's like a, it's an artifact, I think. Hmm. Mm. It's a colorless creature, so it's really good for that Eldrazi Mimic if you yeah. want to, I don't know, an 11 11 that just uh, comes into play. Yeah, that sounds uh, right. It's, I, what is it? It has like a trample and infect and it's indestructible, right? Eh, mm. Whatever. Fancy. Fancy that. <laughs> whatever. I'm just we don't... saying, if you want to be rude, if you want to be real rude. If you want to be smart, that's what this thing does. Is it puts uh, out big stuff for free. Uh, Do it. It's so yeah. good. Yeah, that's Bouncing. great, folks. This is Commander. You don't have to keep friends to play this format. You just need to have them for the beginning of the game. <laughs> I just... Blight Steel Colossus for free is so disgusting. Yeah. So well, disgusting. It may not be fun, but it's very good in the deck. It, and it would it's, be very it's appropriate funny. in the deck. When I was... When I was looking at all of the uh, similar, all of the mono red commanders that use, um, sorry, that have sneak attack in their decks, right? They're basically very similar decks. And I went up to edhrec.com, searched for mono red commanders with, uh, with this in there, with uh, sneak attack in it. And yeah, Blightsteel comes up because it's, it's very funny, isn't it? To just cheat out a Blightsteel Colossus and plow into your opponent. <laughs> like and I said, you don't need to have friends the whole game. You just need to start with friends so the game time. occurs. <laughs> From there on out. Yeah. Who knows? Don't do this, listeners and viewers. I mean, <laughs> keep your soul. I just Dot. love the idea of a giant boar Dot. running at you and on his back with his lasso is a giant <laughs> Blightsteel Colossus. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> it is good. But, like, I don't know. The the value creatures that I was actually thinking about were, uh, if we skip ahead to the Friends Who Bring Friends tab. Nope. Uh, nope. Oh, well, actually, let's <laughs> talk no, about the... No, we're going uh, in order. Okay. Yes. We'll talk about the uh, enter the the things, the permanents that you can play that key off of enter the battlefield trigger. Yeah, so non-creature stuff, and there are plenty of these, but uh, these these cards in particular you want to search for whenever another creature or whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control. So if you go up to someplace like Scryfall, which is an excellent uh, search engine, you can actually click the Advanced tab and then go and just type whatever text you want, especially if it uses a template like whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control. And then you get a bunch of interesting things, and you winnow them down to uh, uh, mono red and artifacts, or colorless. And uh, we chose three of those, because you're going to be putting a lot of big creatures into play, right? And yes. what's funnier than uh, putting a creature into play and then punching your opponent in the face with it right away? So no, as somebody in the Twitch chat Wait. just said, they there came in like a wrecking hog. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> there is something funnier. And it's playing Blightsteel Colossus for free. Mm. Oh, God. But yeah, so like... Well, imagine if whatever you're playing for free also has Electropotence out. I and know. This is, uh, this is kind of the worst of them, but it's an inexpensive card, right? I mean, it's only three mana for an enchantment that says whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay two and a red. It's a, this is money. not an activated ability. This is a triggered ability. And if you do that, if you do, that creature deals damage equal to its power to target creature or player. So your Blightsteel, let's say, or something that's a little bit better, like maybe the Acroan Colossus or something. Because, you know, that's you want to be pure. That's a good card, too, yeah. It is a pretty good yeah. card. Um, for three mana, you can deliver 11 damage straight to the face. And this is the creature dealing damage. So if you have already sold your soul and sacrificed it, 
to uh, the uh, the Phyrexian gods, then uh, now that's suddenly his 11... name is Craig Blanchett. That's eleven, <laughs> eleven infect because of electropotence. That's nasty for six mana. Yeah. That's so does nasty. that also get duped by a uh, Panharmonicon? Uh, yes. Yes. You're right. Oh, that's even worse. It was just oh. mentioned. It was just. It was just in our chat. Blightsteel double trigger off Panharmonicon and kill two. Oh no. That's enough in fact to do it. Oh, that's, that's yucky. That's v pretty good. Yucky. <laughs> Slash, you're tired of the game and you just want to like eat dinner. <laughs> Look, man, games have to end. Games have to they end. They have to end eventually. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but yeah. And then, of course, you have pandemonium, okay. which is so... almost the same thing, except you don't have to pay. Yeah. Wow. And it's just, you know, even better. And then what does Warstorm Surge do? When a creature enters, oh, it's the same thing. These are all basically the same kind of card. Yeah. Just duplicates because it's good. If you have all three of them in play and a creature comes to play, <laughs> you can hit someone for 33 points of damage. Yeah. Yeah, so that's... Uh, <laughs> that's so gross. Pandemonium mm -hmm. is uh, four, four mana. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield, that creature's controller may have it deal damage equal to its power to target creature or player of his or her choice. That's really oh. risky. And it's actually yes. any target. Because it's symmetrical. If you don't want the symmetrical, you pay two mana more for Warstorm Surge. And whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, uh, it punches oh, your opponent. It. Yeah, yeah. Pandemonium can hit you right back just as bad. You gotta yeah. be real careful with Pandemonium. I I have been tempted many times to play Pandemonium, and uh, it doesn't make the cut because, in That's general, scary. I'm playing with tokens, and you know, yeah, maybe it's twenty points of damage in a turn, but. Somebody else drops a blight seal colossus all of a sudden, and uh, that's really bad, right? Oops, yeah. And and the reason these cards are a little bit better than Perforos in the deck, although Perforos should probably be in this deck too, what with you know the 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 god thing, the god connection hanging out there. That's what I was for sure. About. Um, Lots of people have been saying this is a an include in like a five color god deck that they've been doing. Yeah, sure. Um, the uh, the 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 truth is this is not a tokens deck. And so even if you have a couple of token generators in there, you don't really care about making a ton of tokens and swarming. What you're doing right. is plowing into the person with some big creature that you're cheating out. Now, there are exceptions, and we'll get to them and, and talk about a couple of them at least. But, but you know, if you're putting out a 6-6 six, six dragon that has an enter the battlefield effect, or you're putting out, what is the, um, the uh, not the Sun Titan, the... Uh, Sundering. Or no, not the Inferno Titan? The, the Inferno Titan, that's it. Yeah, that was oh, one of the yeah. first cards I thought of, too. Cause it just... that, that has an okay. ETB and an attack trigger, so you're not getting the attack trigger, but the next turn you do. Ooh. And um, and so you're, you're playing with things that... Um, with big red creatures that have um, enter the battlefield effects. You want to punch as much as you can with that. Castle yeah. Warstorm and then bring out a big Udvara Hellkite. Hold on, you want to go aggro with red? I know, right? That's now, weird. What I was thinking about also was how silly Helm of the Host would be with this deck. <laughs> Stop it. Because you know what's better Stop than... It. It's like my favorite card. One pig? Yeah. All the Lots pigs. Of pigs. All the pigs. A All whole the pigs. herd of pigs just barreling down. Because that leads right into the next tab. Friends mm -hmm. who bring friends. Because we love friends obviously, friends. I don't know if you know anything about me, but I'm a fan of uh, cards that bring people along you know, tokens and things. Yeah. And the first thing I thought of with this, with especially with the uh, return to your hand clause, is that if I play something like uh, Siege Gang Commander, which is one of the great classical cards, uh, three and two red for a two, two, that when it enters the battlefield, gives you three one, one goblins. And because they weren't brought in with uh, Ilharg, they just hang around and you can pay one and a red, uh, sacrifice a goblin to do two damage to any target. Mm -hmm. Now, if you've got Panharmonicon, that's six goblins. And actually, I realized I brainstormed a full-on goblin shell with Ilharg at the helm because all of these old goblins have, like, comes into play triggers, like Goblin Matron, Goblin Lackey, and stuff. And you could do some amazing things. The other one I was thinking of, was, <laughs> of course. Hmm? Yeah, but if you're cheating things out and not paying their mana yeah, like, to do it... You could do better than just goblins. And that's why I would bring in our old friend Battle Ball. Uh, Mirror Battlesphere is like one of the iconic, like maybe the most commander card, right? Like seven for a four seven that when it enters the battlefield, you get four mirrors. And when it attacks, you can tap any number of mirrors to 
add plus X plus O to mirror battle sphere, and then also do that much damage to any target, uh, or player or planeswalker rather. Obviously, you can't do that the first time, but you can do it the second time. And it's just, I don't know, Mirror Battlefield is just get, generating a ton of value because you're just getting extra bodies on the table. And especially when you have Perforos. And Perforos sits there and says, whenever you know a creature comes to play, it does two damage to each opponent. Mirror Battlefield being brought into play is five times two. That's ten points of damage just by itself. That's insane. <laughs> That's pretty I, good. It is. And then with Panharmonicon, that's 20 points of damage. Yeah. If you do uh, it right with Perforos, uh, you can wipe wipe out your opponent. Yeah. All of them. Mm-hmm. All at once. Sure could. Solve the problem. <laughs> one fell swoop. Oh. I'm sorry. Someone said tab? Ilhargan's helmet, so I'm drawing Ilhargan's helmet. Oh, what is this tab? <laughs> this is my pure spite tab that I came up with with uh, our friend, my friend, uh, Josh Blakenship. He's at Deathrite Ramen. We started talking about cards <laughs> that would be good in this deck. So here we are. Death so Pierce, Ramen is a great name. It's fantastic. So Pure Spite is just some really fun stuff that Wait. isn't an on attack tag. Pure are you Spite? Gonna... Yeah. Oh, that's your tab name. Got it. Yeah. That's yeah, your page yeah. Okay. So that's the tab that where all these cards are on. So first off, we have our friend, my friend and yours, Hellkite Tyrant. Uh, six, four, and red, red, flying trampled dragon for six five when it deals combat damage to a player gain control of all the artifacts Olivia, that player Olivia. controls and at the beginning of your upkeep if you have 20 or more artifacts you win the game oh, so you hear her roboting as well it's it's 100 percent discord there's nothing else running on us anyway it was hellkite tyrant i read hellkite tyrant um so when he deals combat damage to a player uh gain all con- gain control of all the uh, artifacts that player controls and he comes in with flying and trample so he's probably gonna get through if Ilhar yeah. drops him in yeah this is a um, great card oh, i love this card. yes hellkite is just vicious for this um the next one I, we were chatting about was wildfire eternal it's four it's three and a uh, red it's a zombie jackal cleric for one of f- it's one four yeah it comes in with Afflict 4. Whenever this creature becomes blocked, defending player loses 4 life. Whenever Wildfire attacks, uh, uh, Wildfire Eternal attacks and isn't blocked, you may cast an instant or sorcery card from your hand without paying its mana cost. That's dumb. <laughs> is, that, is that a two-stage triggered ability, though? It is. It has to have the block. Or it isn't. Has it have... has to not be blocked. That's is really it... the... Is that the only the only case where that matters, or? Yeah, I think oh, so or... because it's not it's not that it something happens on attacking. It's if it's attacked and isn't blocked. Right. But if it gets blocked, then you're okay, hitting so it with the ruling afflict. On this card, uh, the first ruling there is an ability that triggers when something attacks and isn't blocked triggered in the declare blocker step. After blockers are declared, yep. if one the creature is attacking and two no creatures are declared to block it. There It'll you go. T- It'll trigger even if that creature was put onto the battlefield attacking rather than yes. having been declared as an attacker it, in the declared Exactly, because it doesn't come in. Yep, it doesn't work. It is about exactly that. for the war pig. To, uh, <laughs> it, is. it is. And you kind of have to block it, right? What's oh, now that the wild... real happy. Because the well the afflict is the afflict is lose for life, and if you block it, then you get to cast an instant or sorcery for free. I can't imagine any red instants or sorceries that Not a one. want to cast. No, there's nothing. For free? Nothing of utility. Mm -mm. You're going to have so much mana from this board. I mean, I'd rather take (laughs) four points of damage by blocking it. Right? Right? You just take the four from the afflict and not let someone get the... But then you're still taking the four. So, I mean, it's a great card because it's like you lose no matter what you do. Yeah. Afflict is such a a great and frustrating mechanic. Oh, it was... It's wonderful to play. It's horrific to play against. Um, the last one is Chaos Maul. It's five mountain mountain. Five yes. red red. Uh, for a Hellion, he's 6-6. Six, six. When he enters the battlefield, it deals three damage to each other creature. Yep. That's pretty yep. good. And you've got yep. big creatures, so if your opponent's So yours are probably going to be fine, yeah. honestly. Yeah. But everybody this else may not be you... so stoked on what just occurred. Yeah, <laughs> This is a card you do not want to panharmonicon, though. It will kill your pig dead. No. Well, yeah. unless you have... That's true, but then you just get him third turn. Get him back in three turns. Just wheel yeah. for him. Who cares? See, I'm thinking of putting the uh, the the war pig into uh, 
Itali. Yeah. Ooh. See, that's the thing. I think that Ilharg is a great commander, and there's obviously plenty of spicy things you can do for him. I think he is, in, like, unstoppable in the 99. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it actually is unstoppable, isn't it? Unless it's chaos warped in. Can you imagine swinging with Ilharg and then bringing Itali in? Just Yes. <laughs> that but, would be so. But the, no, wait, Atali no, 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 doesn't no. get the trigger. Atali doesn't get the trigger. What, oh, what Olivia just tried to It's to declare say. attacking. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. So Josh, I, uh, Blake, and Ship and I were talking about that. We were like, "Oh, we could do Atali," and they were like, "No, triggers don't stack correctly." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't work you don't that get way. The, you don't get the on attack. Because we were thinking the Eldrazi would be great too, but the Annihilator won't work because you're not declaring attacks. It's just coming in. I mean. Still, I mean, my Eldrazi, dude, but is still you, gigantic. But that's the thing is, you don't get the cast triggers and you don't get the annihilator on it. Right. So if it's if it's you just want a big body to, to like deliver a blow and then disappear, fine. But you don't get all those bonus like what makes the Eldrazi really really terrible effects. Fair. So it's I mean, it's still a free twelve twelve, right? Like yeah. there's there's plenty of upside to it, but you're just not going to get that where they're going to have to sack creatures or sack permanents or. Uh, mm any of the other things that come in with Good yeah point. what i what i really like about um uh ilharg with uh, by the way i have to say it because i cannot stop thinking about it i have to say that's one ilharg <sighs> so <laughs> could you at least have made it like a good dad joke pun thing i mean that's one ilharg you're gonna have to get used to this yeah <laughs> no i said at least have made it a good one they're good dad jokes uh, I don't know any good ones, so oh. maybe our maybe our <laughs> Twitch uh, chat I'll can compile uh, a list. save us. <laughs> yeah, why don't you just compile a list? Then? We'll but get right like, on that. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I cannot wait to put this in Itali because uh, I'm ripping cards off the top of that deck, and that means Ilharg is coming out yeah. again and again and again. Oh, it's just going to be awesome. I mean, this that's card what is I... fantastic. Yeah, I I personally in my playstyle and the way I would use it. I'm sorry, I'm still drawing. Um, I'm I'm putting a, a helm of the host on him. Uh, Whoa, I still. What are you doing? Show that someone again. someone was saying talking about Ilharg, and so I'm I'm sketching a helm of the host on him. I'm to, putting two other boar heads on it, and I'm gonna. I'm gonna the helmet. <laughs> uh, sorry, I got real distracted by that comment, and I was just like, I need to draw this. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that next week at I'll least be in painting my miniatures. Style, I would probably never like. Mm, <laughs> I would never make a deck with him as the commander he'd go in a billion of my decks in the 99 because yeah. then you have all kinds of other options that you can tutor him out you can you know do all sorts of other combat tricks when he comes in there's just i feel like there's a lot more versatility with the card if yeah. you have another color or two to run with yeah. and if you want to make like a mononoke deck then you can go red white green and just just naya the hell out of it yes. yeah yeah like uh Mael. If you put Ilharg yeah. in my L. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, Amazing. yeah that's, that's That's fun. a good call. I've uh, I've been looking forward to uh, freely casting, as in not paying for the casting cost for an Avenger of Zendikar. Um, that oh, would no. work really well here. Oh, no. Uh, and if it survives... Pure. Then, pure yeah. spice. Yeah, oh, exactly. yeah. Um, yeah, there's, there's plenty. Like, any kind of gruel deck, somebody in Twitch chat, uh, Espionson... I don't know who that Espion is. Espion Sun, yeah. Uh, it says, uh, yeah, we've never met before, but hello, Espion Sun. says, give <laughs> me this in Xenagos, please. So Yes, yeah. exactly. I don't know, because I was like thinking, it's I broken. wanted to make actually like Ilharg and his dragon buddies. Yeah. Like, you know, with Balefire Dragon, which is when it deals combat damage, does that much damage to each creature that player controls. Mm -hmm. Or just like any of these dragons just have so many good ETBs. I was going to put Balefire in there, but you only gave me one page. <laughs> really good. Just saying. The it, so that's another deck that came up a lot in uh, a lot when I was searching EDHREC.com. Um, Zerolin of the Claw. If you look for yeah! Zerolin of the Claw and require that and use the advanced filter, which is like under the ads on the right hand side, um, and you click advanced filter, must include sneak attack. You get a lot of ideas because mm. that's exactly what this deck is doing. It's great. This is a cool card, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun on the 99. It's going to be a lot of fun at the head of the table. I mean, yeah. I'm super stoked to make this deck. I, this is actually 
more than really actually any of the other legends we've seen so far, this is the one that I really want to jam into a deck because it just seems so much fun to be <laughs> to be just flipping the top card and putting stupid things in. There, oh, he is a wow. piggy helm of the host. <laughs> that is silly. For the listeners at home, Olivia it just drew on her phone a helm of the host <laughs> on top of poor Ilharg with his mohawk sticking out the back. Well, yeah, I mean, it would be. A, it, I mean, have you seen Helm of the Host? It's only going to cover so much. Yeah, you could still yeah, have poison, great. poison I, pig mohawk. Helm of the hog, funny. exactly. Helm of the hog. Helm of the yes. hog. Yes. Um, I'm so saving Olivia, that. I'm going to make it an avatar. You're going somewhere. to need to. Sorry, Olivia. Go on. I'm going to need to what? I'm sorry, you cut out. Oh, uh, I stopped because you were talking. Um, oh. You're going to need to post that picture of the helm oh, of the hog on Ilhar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going <laughs> to happen. No worries. <laughs> Light years ahead of you. I mean, they <laughs> you think that missing. wasn't? If you think that wasn't getting posted, you're out of your mind. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is this is this is this is. I'm yes. doing it right now. Helm but, of the hog. But Charles just said Olivia that, yeah. is going hog wild. Yeah, okay. I am, Charles. That's a sign that we need to call it a day. <laughs> uh, the raised boar has raised hell. Apocalypse ha! now was apocalypse then. It's time for these war pigs to go uh, and cure for a bit. But thank you so much, my friends, for joining us for this episode. Um, You rock. We're super stoked. This is great. Uh, And if you enjoy the show, once again, you can support us by rewinding and listening and figuring out all the places we talked about. Uh, And special thanks to all of our patrons, everybody in the Discord. We are super appreciative of all of you. And uh, Phil... Got it. People can reach us mostly on Twitter, and we're at Commander in MTG. If you're wondering how to spell it, you just uh, look up because we're we have our logo up at the top there. Uh, individually on Twitter, <laughs> we are at Ketjak K E T J A K. That's me. And at Girapuri Gears uh, G H I R A P U R I G E A R S. And at Go Bear Hicks G O B E R T H I C K S. That's right. Uh, still our guest host, so you better be preparing for the end of the show. There, um, we we're not we we uh, are going to have to record some uh, video boilerplate at some point. But in the meantime, special thanks go to Nate Burgess, former co-host of this show, who wrote the theme song for the podcast. Also, Mike Condon for the guitar riff version of the theme song, and I love that song. isn't it? It's really cool. And uh, Tyler Webb, who is very graciously providing us with episode backups, so that uh, as we switch servers, we uh, we're, we absolutely have it. He hosts the Unformatted Review Show. And even though it's explicit, it's two friends talking about some kind of odd movies. And they're very funny. They're hilarious. So go take a listen to them. It's a lot of fun. Can I do the outro? Yes, please. Because <laughs> uh, I want to let the listeners know that I spent all day writing up a number of Christmas carols. And... Phil has always been on me to sing on this show. Uh oh. So here it is, going out. This is unplanned listeners. Silent pig, holy pig, cheating out something big. Stuff your deck list with ETB dudes. Bring out a blight steal if you feeling rude. Scoop in heavenly peace. Scoop in heavenly peace. It's it's sh- it should be scoop at sorcery speed. Oh, that is good. Uh, yeah, that is good. And with that, my friends, good night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Y'all. There you go, everybody. That's still screaming.